right, Ian. <laughs> yeah, yes. The uh, NES creator revealed uh, what happened to the Famicom microphone and why did the NES uh, have its design changed from the Famicom in the U.S. In a talk at the National Video Game Museum in, uh, in Sheffield on Wednesday, uh, almost a week ago, Masa UK U- Uamura, the former head of Nintendo Research and Development 2, revealed the company was concerned that dry weather in parts of North America could result in children accidentally causing the consoles to short, to short circuit. circuit. So, if you didn't know out there, the Famicom came out in 83, it was a traditional uh, cartridge slot loader like game consoles. Almost every game console had been up to that point, like the Atari 2600, where you, you just you put it in the top and you slam that cartridge in. Nice and clean. And basically no gimmicks. every console since as well that uses cartridges. With the cartridge. Yeah. Up to the 90s, you're probably right about that. For a reason, which we're going to get into. So, um, and then they also made it resemble a VHS uh, player because they also, after the video game crash, wanted it not to be a video game console because that was dead in North America, but an entertainment system, but it was a video game console there. So they stuck with that until the NES top loader and obviously Super Nintendo in 91 in the US. Um, so via translator, uh, what's his first name again? Masayuki Uemura. Uh, Masayuki said, on the Famicom, the cartridge was directly connected to the hardware inside, so if you attach the video game cartridge to the actual devices, they're, they're static and chargers, and this can result in a short circuit. Unlike Japan, where it's humid, uh, Texas, for example, in North America is very dry, so it's likely that children, when they touch it, will cause a short circuit. And in the living room, there are rugs and stuff like that, so it's likely that we will have static. So front loading uh, prevents children from actually touching their hands to the devices. That's why we developed it at a front loader. Okay. Seems like an awful lot of work just to keep kids' hands out of the cartridge slot. Uh, there you have Masa it. yuki san um, The amount of time and effort wasted by children uh, in the 80s because of this, des- this horrible design that bent after bent the, the pins after a while because of that, you know, whatever, zero gravity, whatever the hell they call it, mechanism... Um, I don't care if kids got killed as long as I can play my games quicker. I'll just say that. Maybe a few kids got killed in the U.S. if you went with the top lower, you know, lower design. No one got gets hurt, right? In the long run. It came out with a top loader anyway, eventually. Yeah. Did, 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 was there any reports of kids catching on fire or no. getting killed by that? No, they realized that, I mean, it was kind of a, a non-issue. You know, something to not that doesn't really need to be worried about. But Think Nintendo about- back then especially seemed like they were overly precautious about all of this stuff. Yes. <clears throat> I-, I asked uh, our pal Howard Phillips about why didn't you just, you know, let people know that, hell, you c- why did you put a, a, a warning saying don't use don't use rubbing alcohol to clean the games when you should use rubbing alcohol to clean your games? They said we, want, we didn't want kids to like hurt themselves. Yeah, they didn't want kids to catch on fire basically. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know, you know what kids of our generation lost by all the time not being able to play an NES game immediately. You know, that's why that's why <laughs> our generation is so much dumber for that. There was literally in times where it would take up to four, I'd say forty minutes to play an NES game. Oh, then. it would take forever. Blowing on a cartridge. Yeah. I'm not exaggerating that, am I? Like it would be shocked to put. Sometimes if your console game was so finicky, if you got that game in there. That was the game you played for the next two weeks. Yeah, that was just, it. Ninja Gaiden. That's that's the game of April, Ian. That's what we're gonna be playing. You just now. dealt with it, you know. And and um, obviously they learned their lesson. I think it was more of the they wanted not to look like traditional game consoles in North America. Yes, I think that's I think that the was main really thing. Yes. I think that was really it, um, which they alluded to but didn't come out here and say uh, up top. Uh, your Amora also revealed that the microphone on the Famicom second controller was originally intended to be used for karaoke, but it was dropped for the NES because the one karaoke game release, Karaoke Studio from Bandai, was not popular at all. And of course, you know, you, you use it to, you know, kill those little uh, mouse face things in, in Zelda. Uh, yeah. Paul's voice. Paul's voice. Uh, but, so that was always, that was always, you know, they left that in the game in, in North America. Like, what the hell does that mean? didn't make any sense like I blow the whistle doesn't do anything you know you remember that it was like what the, but anyway so the microphone was not used for uh, you know I don't like a huge amount of games in in uh I know there was that one uh, uh T- T- Takashi's castle game you use it to, to do a karaoke thing yeah uh, in the game but I you know obviously it wasn't worth it wasn't worth the hassle 
You'd rather have a start and select button on that second controller than, than, than a microphone, uh, basically, there. I, uh, I didn't know that there was a karaoke game. I didn't know that that was the intent. Sure. Um, and then he also said, and the zapper, well, according to a slide in Yuri Mora's presentation, that was developed simply because Americans in general are interested in guns. Not wrong. No, he's not. I mean, <laughs> I mean he's, he's not he's wrong. right about that. Um, but, you know, obviously it looked like a space phaser in the U.S., but oh, the one in uh, Japan looked like a freaking revolver, Western revolver, that they came out and that came uh, bundled with uh, Wild Gunman, if you wanted to buy one, or, or separately, I believe, but it came bundled with Wild Gunman, with a holster. With a holster. How do I not own that? I should own that. I was going to say, I, I, that that's something I should like, be into. That, that seems like it would I'm going to buy before this podcast comes out because the price can be driven up. You yes. Know? Yes. I, well, won't it be? Uh, there um yeah so anyway uh, interesting that they did this presentation maybe they, they fly in more old school guys uh that that uh talk about stuff like this um yeah the, the original nes uh, design is garbage i i mean it, it is obviously yes it it's is. just it's, absolute it's, garbage it's absolute trash it's a trash design i mean yeah i hate it the squeaking <laughs> when you push the game down and then you got like, you, you know you, 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 you once the pins bent people would be using it like put a little uh, paper wedge in there or, or another game another or, game just or, another cartridge in general or or, or they're forced to use the, the game gene to do that which bent the, I think the, bent the pins anyway the game gene from what I heard over time so but it, just an awful awful design but then they came out with the cleaner kits which did help with that cream substance which still was not as good as rubbing alcohol though. So that helped though. When, when, when NES, when Nintendo came out with a cleaner. cream substance, you ever you never had the NES official? Uh, I have. Kit? It never came with a cream substance. It came with a dropper bottle of rubbing alcohol. Essentially, is that what it was? Yeah, I thought it came with a cream. The other ones came. There was a third party ones came with a cream. I've substance. never seen one with a cream. So you're telling me it came with rubbing alcohol and a and, a, and, and they and told a little, you not yes, to use it yes, until it, they charge you for it. Yeah, they called and it that, cleaning fluid, but it was just rubbing alcohol. And that didn't come out right away though. That didn't come out in '86 or '87. That was like '88, '89, I believe. Oh, yeah. That, that was later on. So we still suffered trying to get Legend of Zelda to work back then. You know. And then the other thing I forgot to mention, all that power on, power up, especially if it was Legend of Zelda, you might blow your battery memory doing that without holding reset like it warned you to. Oh, yeah. So if you had the wrong game in there, like Baseball Stars, you you had to make sure you're holding reset while you're getting into work too. That that, that happened a couple. Trust me, that fucking happened a couple times, especially with baseball stars. If you have your custom team with kids in the neighborhood, you know, and who's Billy going to take that out of? And street hockey's going to take it on Pat <laughs> or street tennis. Going to hit the ball down the fucking street. street tennis. Street tennis was the best scene. I'm sure it was. It was so fun. Street tennis. Uh, I, I can keep I can keep up with Billy in street tennis. Street hockey, I was smaller. I got my ass kicked, but street tennis, I had the finesse. Jimmy Connors back then. All right. Anyway, anything else to add here? No. All right. 